How's it going star seekers? My name's Got Cake and in this review we're going to be taking a look at Twist and Bounce. A casual high score chaser where you rotate a tower to allow a ball to fall through gaps in platforms where the aim of the game in each level is to make your way to the bottom of the tower whilst avoiding the brightly coloured sections of each platform. So Twist and Bounce is the Nintendo Switch version of a series of smartphone and browser based games. Its gameplay mechanics, visuals and interface are near identical to the mobile games Helix Jump and Twist Ball. So hitting the very simple main menu where it's deftly silent, we can check out the game's very simple options where we have language, rumble and sensitivity options. And you're going to want to set your sensitivity to max in order to rotate the tower faster. Before we begin we can also check out the game's very simple controls. The game doesn't actually support pro controllers and instead even when playing single player mode we have to detach and use a single joycon. Now it also supports touchscreen mode though if you're like me your fat sausage fingers will get in the way of seeing the tower. So to get started we hit SR to begin and our bouncy ball gets to a bouncing. The game's premise is simple, rotate the tower with a thumbstick to drop it through the gaps in platforms and avoid the smaller lighter coloured sections of the platforms as you make your way down to the bottom of the tower to complete the stage. Now there's a bar at the top of the screen which shows your progress through the level and if at any point you hit one of these lighter coloured sections it's game over and you've got to start again from the top of your current tower. Platforms are also randomly generated at the start of each level so you never see the same layout twice and there's a colour scheme switch each time you play a level to add a little variety of visuals. Now each time you pass through a platform it'll shatter and you'll earn a number of points based on your current level. So at level 1 it awards 1 point, level 2 awards 2 points per platform and so on and so forth. There are no leaderboards in the game and although your high score is recorded, to me this is totally pointless as you don't end up restarting games from level 1 and instead always begin playing from whatever level you've achieved. This means that as you complete more towers you earn more points per platform and so it becomes easier to beat your previous high scores. And so I really don't get this level system in the game. To me, an infinite tower would have made more sense with high scores. So in addition to points you're also able to earn coins. To do this you need to pass through 3 or more platforms in a row without touching them and when you next come into contact with a platform you'll then shatter it and earn 5 coins. The coins you earned are then used to buy additional balls from the in game shop and these come in various shapes and sizes but the purely cosmetic changes and have no effect on gameplay. Now it's worth noting that it doesn't matter if you pass through 3 or 20 platforms in a row, you still only earn 5 coins. And you also don't earn any additional points for passing through multiple platforms, which means once you've earned enough to buy every ball in the shop, this mechanic is rendered meaningless. They could have included a simple points multiplier for dropping through multiple platforms in a row, but instead you may as well just work your way down as slow and safely as possible to earn a high score. There's also a single power up in the game which appears at random in levels and this provides you a boost smashing you through multiple platforms until it wears off. So as you work your way up through the levels, a few additional elements are slowly introduced to platforms which provide a slight increase in difficulty. These mainly come in the form of moving coloured sections and there are a few variants. We have double movers that move like this, single movers that move like this and another set of double movers that move like this. The amount of coloured segments of platforms also seem to increase slightly, though this is very gradual and there's very little difference between level 1 and level 40, which is the point at which I decided I'd seen enough and stopped playing. Now Twist and Bounce is one of those simple games which has that one more try addictiveness to it, but the game's scoring mechanics really go against this. I mean what's the point in going for a high score when you can complete a few more levels and have a lot easier time beating your previous score. Another issue I encountered was with the game's random platform generation as whilst passing through several platforms in a row is enjoyable and you'll become more skilled at doing this, you'll eventually end up hitting a platform where its gap is positioned in such a way that you simply can't rotate the tower fast enough to drop through. And this just spoils the fun when you've got a good combo going and your flow is just ruined by one of these impossible platforms. Now Twist and Bounce also features a 2 player versus mode but in another baffling choice of gameplay decision, after one player fails, they have to wait then for the other player to finish before starting a new game. So in all, whilst Twist and Bounce is addictive, it doesn't actually contain any mechanics that reward the player for either playing skillfully or earning in game currency. The game's eShop description says that you can adjust the difficulty for your playthrough which is a lie and I also wouldn't call it single music track or three sound effects great. 
So now we come to rating the game. Now I rate games between 1 and 5 stars, with a Shubaware stamp of approval reserved for the worst games on the eShop. This rating is based on my own personal opinion on what a game has to offer in terms of gameplay and value for money to potential buyers. And for a rating I'd give Twist and Bounce, 1 out of 5 stars. The game really only fits the bill as a casual time filler game. It offers zero originality and you can get the same gameplay experience for free on your mobile phone. So I really wouldn't recommend paying for the game unless it's on sale. You can get Twist and Bounce from the UK Switch eShop for £4.49 or from the US eShop for $4.99. Hey Starseekers, hope this review of Twist and Bounce helped you out and if it did show your appreciation by hitting that like button and let me know your thoughts and opinions on the game in the comments section below. As always, don't forget to subscribe for future Nintendo Switch game reviews and jump onto the Star Seekers Discord to say hello. For now though, I just want to say thanks once again for watching and until next time, game on.